Hi and welcome to Bumpo.net video and today we have question of the week and question of the week well there wasn't a real question but today we're going to cover the Karina uh, history and it's going to be a mix of me talking to the camera uh, a mix of whatever I have here on my screen uh, and then going to be a bit mixed together so anyway, uh, it's a new thing that I'm trying out and the thing is called Prezi and Prezi is a presentation tool that does some little bits of animation and you can probably already see some of the bits here and there and I tried to make like a storyline out of that. So let's get started. Uh, at first uh, you can see that it says like Karina A60 release but there was something prior to that. There was the pre-production phase of the Karina and the Karina was developed uh, alongside the Celica and the Corona of the same generation. And Toyota decided to group the three together and the Corona was a, a bit longer wheelbase than the Karina and the Celica. And it, was natural because the Corona was a certain floor band that Toyota already had and they decided to make a smaller version and create a sports car out of that and that was called Celica and then they decided that alongside with the Celica they could sell the Corina at the same time so both of the cars got released at the same time so there was the uh, it was, I think, the A10 series where you had the, the Celica and the Carina uh, both on the same floor plan. And both cars evolved and became larger and larger. And the wheelbase was stretched in the second generation to two and a half meters. And the Corona was actually kept the same, but almost similar in size. So then Toyota decided to make the uh, wheelbase similar for all three cars and hence put it on the same floor pan and it also allows them to do a couple of things so these are some initial sketches from the Carina that I found in one of the workbooks and some uh, example uh, mock-ups that Toyota made uh, in one of the magazines that I have and in, especially in this picture you can already see that there's a lot of overlap between the Carina and some other models so the one here where the mouse pointer is pointed towards um, that's the one that really looks similar to the Soar, Soar uh, Z10 uh, we've got one here that looks like it's a successor of the Toyota Celica second generation uh, so it looks a bit similar however um, in the end they, they decided that this should be the body type that they would go for and the same here so they made this mock-up there are no seats in there uh, it's just like a plastic body uh, moving onwards uh, so there were some other body types for the Celica as well we have the uh, liftback obviously which is different than the, uh, than the normal notchback uh, but there was also the Celica Double X, and the Celica Double X is what we call in the uh, West and in the US Celica Supra. Uh, and there was also the Celica Twin Cam Turbo Group B Rally Car, and there was on location special uh, type the TA64 featuring a 4T GTE engine, which was a really powerful engine that uh, featured 240 horsepower. Uh, it's a 2 liter engine. And it was to homologate this car for uh, the, the, the World Rally Championship. And it was very successful, and especially in the African countries. Moving onwards to the Corona. The Corona was basically the, the similar to the Carina a sedan. And it was a bit more classy than the Carina in that sense. Uh, maybe you could call it a, a competitor of, let's say, the Skyline or maybe, well it was somewhere between the Skyline and the Bluebird uh, but anyway the uh, Toyota decided that it should also feature uh, the taxi version of the Corona and what they did was quite weird because they used the front end of the Carina on the Corona taxi and maybe they did that on purpose to uh, differentiate the Corona normal road-going car from the Corona taxi but it's still weird that they did that 
So you can exchange the Corona taxi front end to a Carina uh, back and forth. So finally, in uh, uh, I think it was July or August, the Celica got, um, got released and the Carina got released in September 1981. And in that initial release, they featured the coupe, the sedan and the van. And the coupe version uh, featured the GT models, the SE models, the ST and the SG models. And those models were already available in the previous generation of the Carina. So most of them were naturally a carryover. Uh, the GT model carried over the 18RG and the T 2TG engines. And the 18RG engine is the 2 liter double overhead cam engine, while the 2TG engine is similar design but a different engine series with uh, a similar double overhead cam by Yamaha um, featuring uh, fuel injection in this case uh, which was different than uh, from outside Japan where it, it didn't feature fuel injection uh, the Corona SE model was uh, the special edition uh, Carina and the spe special edition Carina meant that the seats were really nice plush seats upmarket uh, and it featured the 1.8 liter 3T engine and the 1.8 liter 3T engine featured uh, electric fuel um, <coughs> sorry excuse me about it electric fuel injection we have the Carina ST model the ST is basically uh, the, the sports model of the Carina um, it's a bit weird because you would expect the, the GT model to be the sports model and the ST model more like the GT model and the other way around um, this car is more Grand Tour it's got the 3T engine or the 3A engine and the 3A engine was a new engine for Toyota uh, the A series engine got introduced uh, in Tercel and then the Carina followed as the second car to feature the, the 3A engine here. Also nice to see in this overview is uh, the, the usage of uh, transmission. So you have the A40 transmission here which is automatic 3-speed three uh, three box. <clears throat> well, uh, at the bottom you can see the A40D, uh, which is the same box but then with an overdrive module. And the overdrive gave it a fourth gear. Then we have the 3A engine, which was the relatively modern equivalent of, uh, let's say, uh, previous uh, generation 2T engine, uh, but then a bit more modern with the couple of new features in there uh, including uh, that it was now belt driven instead of uh, chain driven and the SG model uh, additionally to the 3A engine it got the 1S engine and the 1S engine was similar to the 3A engine a new engine and the S engine series we know it from the 3SGE or the 3SGTE that featured in a couple of Celicas uh, in the Alteza uh, where it's like the, the most sought after uh, 3S is the 3SGE blacktop beams engine which has an output of 210 horsepower so it's a really potent uh, platform uh, it got introduced here on the Carina platform and it featured the W55 uh, gearbox and this is also one of the reasons why the Carinas were scavenged a lot because the, the S series engine uh, was made it to a W55 series uh, gearbox and it also means that the gearbox itself has the correct bell housing for the, the next generation um, 3S engines so this uh, especially this model got scavenged a lot uh, the 1S U similar to the, the 3A uh, it's belt driven, uh, it's uh, the new modern uh, engine by Toyota compared to the, the T engine and the R engine series. 
The sedan, the sedan isn't that much different. Uh, in addition to all the normal models, it's also got the DX and the STD model. And if you look at the Carina GT sedan, it's almost the same as the as the uh, as the coupe. The the coupe is obviously a different body style, but the GT sedan is quite similar, same engine, uh, similar trim. Same goes for the SE sedan. There isn't much difference between the SE sedan and the SE coupe. ST, same story, it's quite the same. And the SG, you got a little bit more choice in uh, engines and gearboxes. But then we end up at the DX, and the DX you can immediately spot that there is something different between the SG and the DX. And the difference, I can point it out, and I have to go back one more to the ST. You can see that the ST has longer bumpers at the side of the fenders and the rear quarters while the SG has shorter bumpers and these bumpers are the ones that we have in Europe as well. Um, I would say the European models would be equivalent of the SG. However, there is a small difference with the DX. The DX you can see that it's missing the side molding and the side molding is especially important because it's protecting your uh, doors from what, what scratches when you bump it into let's say the neighboring cars in the parking lot and it's missing on the DX and some European countries didn't get that side molding, some did. Mine did because it was from Germany, also all the Dutch cars got it but the Belgian cars were missing that piece of trim. Uh, the STD it's even more uh, basic than the Carina DX, DX is for deluxe uh, so, uh, compared to the standard, which is STD, the standard uh, featured vinyl seats, so that's really sweaty during the, the, the summer. Uh, there is no luxury at all. I think the most luxurious thing on this car is probably the aerial antenna. Uh, so the DX is a bit more luxurious, it has cloth seats. Oh joy! Uh, moving onwards to the van. The van, um, there's a difference between what we call a wagon and a van. In, in Japan, a van is basically for the workforce, so it's a company car. Uh, and that also reflects in the models here. So we have SG, DX and STD, and the SG obviously is the upmarket van here. Uh, and you can bring a couple of your buddies or, or, or uh, workforce people in here. Uh, the SG van features a 12TG and the 12TG is a derived 2T engine. Uh, it's got the same capacity but it has a couple of differences, minor differences. Moving onwards to the DX van, uh, similar as with the sedan we have the DX and the uh, SG. The DX is a bit more basic. Uh, it also got, uh, oh I forgot to mention that during the sedan, uh, another big difference between the SG and the DX, you can see it here, is on the SG you have the choice of a 5 gear, 5 ratio box, while with the DX you only have 4, that's the only choice you will get. Moving onwards to the STD, the STD really looks like the basic panel van that you would know from the 80s. Um, it's got like the vi same vinyl seats as with the sedan uh, and those hubcaps. It's, my god, <laughs> this is like the most basic you can get. Now in February already we get the first update uh, where the diesel vehicles are introduced. So Toyota got this awesome one um, C engine and there's another model called the Surf and we'll get into that. But first I want to go into a bit more detail about Paris Dakar. Uh, a couple of privateers entered their uh, or took let's say the ST version of the Carina and brought it to uh, Paris Dakar. This year was the first year that they entered the Paris Dakar and they even managed to finish it uh, I think 11th or 12th place. So that was quite an achievement and 
obviously uh, as a non-factory backed privateer team that's an amazing achievement and then Toyota obviously used that as propaganda for the car like hey it survived Paris Dakar you should buy this so yeah introduction of a few new body types or and uh, a few new models let's put it that way so you can see immediately there's something here called a wagon and that's why I imagine mentioned that we what we know as a wagon is different than what they call a van in Japan so the wagon is more like an American wagon a large wagon you can sit in it that it's got a lot of seats uh, it's got a lot of room and space still it's the same car as the van it's the same length the difference is that compared to the sedan this is a bit more comfortable because you can fold down the seats and you would have a bed hence the surf designation you can bring your surfboard in here or you could lie down in it and have a great night at the beach uh, the surf model itself <clears throat> only got the choice of the 1s engine and only a manual uh, gearbox so that was uh, quite limited for the choice but still the, the car was uh, a relatively nice uh, well it was a, a very nice car to begin with because it was based on the ST model moving on to the sedan sedan updated on the SE and SG models where we got the introduction of the diesel engine and the diesel engine was the 1C diesel engine and the 1C diesel engine um, was a very much improved engine compared to the L series diesel engines by Toyota Toyota already had the L series which is a 2.2 or 2.4 liter diesel engine and it's a really crude diesel engine it's just like the old fashioned ones uh, the 1C diesel engine was only 1.8 liters and back in those days that was already a really tiny diesel engine uh, and it got a really high compression ratio compared to the ones used in the L series and that's also the reason why Toyota only sold it in Japan and Europe because using a high compression diesel engine also requires good diesel fuel and if you have a really bad quality diesel fuel it's not going to work moving on to the SG we already have a, a bunch of uh, various uh, engines drivetrains to choose from and now we have the 1C in addition also nice the van also got updated uh, by introducing the diesel variant as well so that was also quite nice for workforce people to have a cheap runabout now there's another update in October of 1982, so in the same year, and this is a major update for Toyota. It's, it, uh, they introduced the 3T GTEU engine, which replaced the 18RG engine. And as I said earlier, the, the R series engine were on its way out, the T series engine were on its way out. Um, still, they introduced the 3T GTEU. Uh, because it had this Yamaha hat and it was a really special and um, special engine compared to what they already had so what changed uh, there were a couple of changes there was an additional uh, change uh, to this as well we'll get to that also so on the coupe we have the GTT model which is uh, for GT turbo uh, and we got a change on the SG and I'll get to that in a second so the Karina coupe got uh, a 1.8 liter 3T GTE U engine um, and the GTT designation was basically the upper trim class of the uh, of the car including this newer engine uh, it also featured a different gearbox because the A40D was not sufficient enough to deal with the 3T GT EU engine 18RG on its way out 3T GT EU engine in and you can see immediately that it's it, it's boasting 160 PS um, to put this in perspective this is 1982 
when Nissan was stuffing the FJ20 ET into their uh, R30 Skyline. And keep in mind that the FJ20 was a 2 liter turbocharged engine and it had 150 PS output. So when Toyota released this new engine inside the Carina, it was quite a big stir because it was a lot more powerful than the Nissan engine with a smaller capacity. Also, you can see that there are a lot of uh, spark plugs in here. You can see a lot of wires going in there. That's because it's dual spark. It's a twin spark, twin cam, turbocharged engine. A really, really efficient engine but also a really fragile engine and that's also why um, it's not considered to be a very tunable engine. Uh, not a lot of people are prov did provide aftermarket stuff for this engine. But still it was a really really popular model uh, of the Carina and also this engine is one of the most sought after uh, Toyota engines in the end because you can just slot it into any car running a T-series engine. So also for any American car, uh, let's say whether it's a, 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 two, a 3TC engine or a 2T uh, engine, you can just slot this one in and you will have a lot more power than uh, what your car is used to have and most of the time it would just double the, no the amount of horsepower. Um, so the, the engine itself is like, like uh, three, four thousand euros alone. If you can find it, if you manage to find it on auction show. Uh, another uh, change uh, with Toyota Carina was the SG Jeune. And Jeune means uh, young in France. So this was really focused on the young aspect of the Carina. So you had the SG, which was for your average 40-ish people, person. And then you have the SD, SG Jeune. 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 Uh, which was focused on below 30 and it really have a nice uh, bright interior and there's another difference with the sedan but I'll get to that later going to the sedan we have the uh, GTT and the GTTR sedan and there's a big difference between the coupe and the sedan here because the GTTR is the racing or racing. It's like with uh, the Nissan Skyline, you have the GT and the GT Racing, which is the GTR. Now, Toyota introduced the GTT and the GTTR uh, being the racing model. But the racing model meant that you have bucket seats, bucket like seats, uh, and alloy wheels. Uh, it wasn't it was unlike the, um, uh, the, the, let's say, very unlike the, the Nissan Skyline GTR, where they removed all the necessary, unnecessary uh, equipment from the car. That, don't get me wrong, but a GTTR even got delivered with power steering and uh, air conditioning, if you like to. Uh, power windows were optional, so it wasn't really lightweight. Moving onwards to the Jeune Sedan. The Jeune Sedan was, uh, as you can see, a little bit different than the, the Coupe. Uh, and let's zoom in on the picture. You can see that there is something odd with the rear bumper. And what you can see here are um, what we nowadays would call parking sensors. And what you can see up here is some sort of warning device that if you if you would reverse you would see the lines here going up from green to red and red obviously means stop um, it's quite funny because in Europe or later in the 90s we considered the parking sensors to be business grade or executive grade this car was marketed for young people. So let's say some, some rich father would buy his daughter this Carina, including these parking sensors, because he deemed his young daughter 
wasn't capable enough of doing parallel parking. Um, so that's quite a funny accessory uh, and used in a whole different um, perspective. Also, I tried to figure out whether this was the first car by Toyota featuring the parking sensors. And as far as I've seen, uh, the Crown only followed a couple of months later than the Carina. So it could be the first car from Toyota that featured parking sensors. Moving on, another update. And this time it's not an update, it's a facelift. In May 1983, the Carina got facelifted, uh, the 2TG engine got removed, and the 3T engine got phased out. Uh, the, don't forget the 3T GTEU is still there. Uh, and then the 4AGE engine gets introduced. So there's a, a big change on the coupe and on the sedan, uh, especially since there's a facelift. If we look at the coupe, there's a lot of stuff that has been changed. So first of all, the uh, slated grille got introduced. Uh, it's a bit similar to the ones that you would see on, uh, let's say, the later type uh, Coronas and Carinas. So it was quite uh, a new design feature. Um, also, all the coupes did have a diamond shaped grill, so that's the, the Zenki model grill and the Cookie model grill has got the slated grill. Um, also it's got redesigned taillights, so the taillights were quite different than uh, the ones previously. The ones previously were uh, well, flush on the, um, on the rear quarter and also got like these sections um, or vertical lines in the design and that basically disappeared the new ones were well how, how would you describe that it was like a bit angular sticking out of the body so the sedan got a different uh, shape but it's got a similar uh, treatment Moving on, new wheel designs. Um, you can see that the old one uh, got these pizza cutter rims. We call them pizza cutters uh, for the A86 because they look like a pizza cutter. They just squish uh, across your pizzas. Um, and instead you got these uh, what we call P-type uh, Supra rims. Uh, they featured on the Celica Supra uh, and the P-type featured the 15 inch wheels. Uh, the 14-inch ones are a bit more dished and they are wider. They are 7J instead of 6J. I um, can't remember. I, I've seen somewhere that they were called differently after a game, but I'll, maybe I'll do that in some other trivia video. Um, moving forward, we have the GTTR that featured those uh, P-type uh, Supra rims, while we have the GTT that featured these, um, well they're, they're basically steel rims, but they're still a bit nicely designed, so they're more beautiful than the standard rims. Um, moving onward, we have Panda painted bumpers, and I put Panda between quotes. Um, Obviously the A86 has panda paint and that's why I call them panda paint and bumpers because the, they have been treated a similar, they have a similar treatment as for the, uh, for the A86 yet the car itself isn't the same as the Panda A86 so they're, they're panda paint and bumpers so they're, they're uh, in the same color as the body and that was a new thing for Toyota to do uh, they didn't do that, they only did that on the Sora as far as I know. That was also a, a really new feature. So the coupe, uh, we got an addition of the GTTR model. So the, the coupe got the GTTR designation for a race version or a race version with bucket seats. Uh, while the GTT model was more basic, we can see that here. And clearly see a difference between the two. 
uh, the Carina GT and GTR Coupe uh, now feature the 4A GEU and you might see that it only got one option even though the GT and GTTR feature an automatic the GT and the GTR coupe only feature a manual and that was also quite new so two GTG out for AGE in and this was a revolutionary engine back in those days it's a 1.6 liter engine uh, double overhead cam, belt driven um, it's got this Tevis module, Tevis uh, it's got 16 valves, which was uh, relatively new back in those days. There were a couple of 16 valve engines already there. I think the S20 by Nissan for the Skyline was one of the first 16 valve Japanese engines. Uh, but this one uh, actually was a bit more advanced because it was a, a, a double overhead cam engine. Uh, and this Tevis module actually could block off, um, let's say, one of the valves per cylinder uh, and that would increase the fuel efficiency uh, of the engine, especially in the lower bottom end of the, uh, of the revs. Uh, you get a lot more torque by uh, giving it less fuel than more fuel. Moving on, as Eco P, uh, we are now uh, we got rid of the 3T engine, so the S E Coupe no longer has this engine. Then we also have the ST Coupe, and the ST Coupe also no longer got the 3T engine, and hence only available as a 3A engine. Moving on to the sedan, the sedan uh, you can see that there is a different uh, difference in headlights. Um, the double headlights have been uh, redesigned. Oh, and by the way, you could order uh, the headlights uh, for each and every one of them and, and swap them without an issue. Uh, but by default, the sedan got the double headlights while the coupe got the single headlights. But there are a couple of coupes that got delivered with the double headlights by default. So, new double headlights um, you can see that it, it's a bit difficult to see so I'll uh, illustrate it here you can see that the side markers are smaller and now fit within the black plastic or the silvery plastic here uh, in this design uh, there's also some sort of a black plastic on top of the headlights so it's got some sort of what we call for the AE86 a brow and the brow kind of makes it look a bit more angry while this one looks more friendly if that makes sense um, redesigned taillights as I said uh, it's uh, got a similar treatment as with the coupe uh, we have here the vertical uh, divided taillights while well, this one is and it's flush with the body while here it's just sticking out a bit New wheel designs, sim the same as the coupe. Uh, we got the uh, P-type uh, uh, Supra rims, we got uh, uh, Steelies, and we got the Panda painted bumpers, which is exactly the same. Moving on to the sedan, we got a change on the GT GTR. Uh, introduction of the GTR, actually, the SE and ST were missing now its 3T engine. You can see it here as well. Uh, and it's gone, no more. 3T engine, no more 3T engine. Good! August 1983, we're moving onwards. Uh, 5K J engine replaces the 12T J engine. That's important for the van, so this is a van only. Also, we have the introduction of the so called two door Carina van, which is not a two door Carina van, but you know. So we get the SG van where we have the 5K engine instead of the 12T engine, 12T out, 5K in. It's a comparable engine, it's not that different. Uh, the 5K engine uh, is obviously based on the, on the K-series engines, it's a 1.5 liter instead of a 1.6 liter. DX, 
same 5k engine instead of a 12t engine then we have the Carina two-door van um, you can see here in this picture why it's a two-door van it's still got that rear door you can still open it but you know it's it's a flat floor there is no bench in there and then the STD van also has the 5k engine oh my god face out yes so uh, what happened is that around uh, this time uh, 1984 there were two Carinas so we have the Carina FR series and we've got the Carina FF series and the FF series is the front wheel drive series so Toyota started to phase out the Carina FR series and obviously they wanted to make a nice transition so at first they just discontinued the SE and ST sedan and also the, the diesel engines so sedan big change what happened we uh, there's a change on the SG model and the SE no longer exists I'm sorry no more SE no more special edition also the ST the sports sedan it's gone SG model, uh, it's quite simple, the diesel engine got removed as an option. Probably to move all the uh, people towards the, uh, towards the front wheel drive diesel engine. Make more sense, of course. More phase out. Uh, July 1985, SG, ST, Coupe and the GT, Sedan and Coupe are discontinued. It's sad. Body types, coupe and sedan, both affected. So the coupe, we only have remaining the SE and... Is that correct? SE, ST... Uh, no, that's not correct. Actually, it should be gone. Sorry, made an uh, error in the slide, but you know, I'll fix that in the comments. So we've got the Carina, GTTR and GTT. We got rid of it. GT, GTR, we got rid of it. ST, we got rid of it. SG, gone. Sedan, remaining SG, DX, and STD because, you know, GT, GTR, it's gone. GT, GTTR, it's gone. It's sad. More and more start to disappear. More phase out in January 1988. So. Keep in mind that's five year difference, almost, almost a five year difference, four and a half. Uh, sorry, I'm doing the wrong calculation. <laughs> almost a three year difference uh, between the previous phase out and the current phase out. The sedan and coupe are now discontinued. So we no longer have a coupe or a sedan. They're both gone. Still the van is selling, uh, but not for long because in April also the van is gone and that kind of ends the Carina production and that's really really sad because you know it's an end of a, a front wheel real real drive era of the Carina and now it's getting uh, succeeded by the, the front wheel drive Carinas instead and the Coronas and it also, it, well, basically it follows what Toyota has been aiming for since the early 80s. Front-wheel drive cars, while only the big GT cars and the, the larger luxury cars are supposed to be real-wheel drive. And you know, in, in the 80s, obviously, it made more sense to go for front-wheel drive because it's more fuel-efficient, uh, drivers are more used to... Uh, the behavior of a front-wheel drive instead of what this car does if you drive it in a wet it could just slide out its tail whenever uh, you enter a corner too fast or step on the gas too quickly so yes it made sense uh, but still it's sad thank you for sticking around i think this was half an hour uh, of a presentation on the carina and about all its models all its specifics there are of course many more details that i can tell you about this carina so i'll save that for another day maybe some sort of trivia going through um, all the major minor trivia 
I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave something in the comments below if you liked it or you didn't like it, thought it was too long. Should I do something similar, A86? Uh, maybe you've got a, another car in, in thought. Uh, I was thinking about uh, uh, doing a similar video or presentation for the Honda City Turbo. So that might be nice, or even the whole Honda City range. Um, so I'll, I'll do that maybe next time. Just leave something in the comments and uh, see you around.